Hey guys, today we're going to look at the elbow, the wrist, and the hand. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so the elbow, we have the humeral ulnar joint, the humeral radial joint, and the proximal radial ulnar joint, and the distal radial ulnar joint. And then in the wrist, we have the radial carpal joints, and then we have the mid carpal joints. And then in the hand, we have the carpo metacarpal joints and the metacarpophalangeal joints and then the interphalangeal joints. Okay, what are you looking at here? We have an arm. So we have the humerus, the ulna, the radius, the annular ligament, the interosseous membrane, and then we have all these bones here. So we have straight line to pinky. Here comes the thumb. So we have scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, pisiform, hamate, the hook of the hamate, capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. Then we have first, second, third, fourth, fifth metacarpals, proximal and distal phalange, proximal, middle, and distal phalanges. So let's start with the elbow. So we have the humero ulnar joint. That's just like the classic elbow flexes and extends. When it flexes, it's going to roll. The ulna is going to roll and slide towards, towards you in flexion and then roll and slide away in extension. Now we'll look at the humeral radial joint. The humeral radial joint isn't actually connected to the radius until it's active. And then when you contract muscles like the brachioradialis, it's going to shove the head of the radius into the humerus only when during active flexion. So during flexion, it's going to roll and slide on the humerus away from the board, roll and slide away from the board, roll and slide into the board. At the proximal radio ulnar joint, the axis is going through the head of the radius all the way through the head of the ulna, and then the radius is just gonna flop on over it. This annual ligament, right here is going to lock the end of the radius, the head of the radius in place. So when you go to do pronation and supination, that annual ligament just hangs onto it and then makes it so it won't go anywhere. The radius is just gonna spin right in there for, so it's gonna spin towards us for pronation and then spin away from us for supination. And then at the distal radial ulnar joint, it's going the, this end of the radius where it is connected to the ulna is concave and so it's slide in the same direction towards the camera for pronation. And then the radius is gonna cross over the ulna. And then for supination, the radius is going to roll and slide into the board. So from pronation to supination, the radius is gonna roll and slide back into the board. We have the wrist. And so the wrist, we have radiocarpal joint, mid carpal joint, radiocarpal joint. So mostly it's just gonna come in contact, the radius is mostly gonna come in contact with the scaphoid, the lunate, and then if you fully ulnarly deviate, it's gonna slide this way and it's gonna come in contact with the triquetrum. Um, and most of the time it's in open chain. So these convex proximal row of carpal bones is going to move on a concave radius. And, and what that looks like is it's gonna, when you do ulnar deviation, it's gonna roll ulnarly and slide radially that all of these all of these bones are going to do that on the radius. And then when you do radial deviation, the proximal carpal bones are going to roll radially and then slide ulnarly. The distal carpal bones kind of move the exact same way as this one, except instead of them moving on the radius, the distal is going to be moving on the proximal carpal bones. And they kind of just mimic everything that the proximal does. So, and for both the proximal carpal bones moving on the radius and the distal carpal bones moving on the proximal carpal bones, the axis of rotation 
is at the head of the capitate, so right where that blue dot is. Um, yeah, so that's the wrist. So it has, so it has ulnar deviation, radial deviation, flexion, extension, convex part of the joint is moving on the concave part, and it's going to roll towards you, and then it's going to slide back. So it's going to roll palmarly and slide dorsally except it's only two degrees of freedom, proximal and distal, kind of do the exact same thing. And then moving into the hand, we have the carpometacarpal joints. The first carpometacarpal joint is a saddle joint. So it's going, when you move away from the palm, that's abduction. And when you move towards the palm, that's adduction. And then flexion and extension. So when you move away from the palm, that is abduction and the metacarpal bone is going to roll and slide in opposite directions. So that's when the metacarpal is convex is in this plane. And then when it's for flexion and extension, that's when the metacarpal bone is concave. So it's going to be rolling and sliding in the same direction in this plane and rolling and sliding in opposite directions in the abduction adduction plane. Um, that's the only one that's kind of wonky. It's the only saddle joint. The second and third carpal metacarpal joints are very firm and rigid and they don't have a lot of movement. And fourth and fifth carpal metacarpal joints are, those are going to roll palmarly and slide palmarly on the hamate. And then the rest of the hand, you have your metacarpal phalangeal joint, metacarpal phalangeal joint, metacarpal phalangeal joint. Those all move the same. Um, so they're going, the concave member is the phalanx moving on the convex metacarpal. So when you do something like this, they all come together. The, the proximal end of the phalanx is concave, rolling and sliding in the same direction, palmarly. And that's happening at every single one of these. So they roll and slide palmarly. Roll and slide palmarly. And then roll and slide dorsally. And then the same thing happens at the, the PIP, the proximal interphalangeal joint, in between the first two um, phalanx. And they, so everything kind of moves the same after you're in the PIPs, the pips, and then the dips, the DIPs. So at the distal end of the finger, the, the distal phalanx is going to roll and slide palmarly on the middle phalanx and so on. The MCP joints of two, three, four, and five also have a, an anterior posterior axis. So they have two degrees of freedom. So they can do the flexion and extension like we talked about, but they can also do um, abduction and adduction. And then the middle finger would be considered, or the third MCP joint would be considered radial and ulnar deviation. And that's the same thing. So it's going to be a roll and slide away from the middle finger and then a roll and slide towards the middle finger. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you don't mind, you can like and subscribe. And the videos hopefully just keep getting better and better. And it's a great way for us all to review. Thanks.